Welcome to Abundant Life Church. Mark 1, verse 32 through 35, and it reads, At evening when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick, and those who were demonized. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak, because they knew him. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Would you please bow your heads? Father, again, we thank so much, and as we agreed upon your command, your, your spoken word, that we speak to the nations. And we thank you that this is a month of prayer. Prepare our hearts continually. Give us the heart and desire to spend time with you. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone will say, Amen, amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. God bless you. I'm going to tell the message this morning, the power of prayer. How many of you, can you raise your hand? If you, have, if you need some, if you need God to move on your behalf, you have something that, is, that, is, uh, that you need his intervention, that you need his move in your spirit, would you just raise your hand? Healing, restoration, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Well, this is a month of prayer, and it is my prayer as we continue to move, that you would, that you would, uh, that you would be inspired to, to spend time in prayer. See, prayer is really easy to understand. Everyone prays. It's really too, easy to understand, but it's very difficult to do. Right? It is easy to understand, but it's very difficult, difficult to do because... When you begin to pray, there's going to be a spiritual battle. And that's the reason why when we begin to pray, you are touching the heaven, the power of prayer. You know, I wish that it's going to be easy, but it's not. There's going to be battles. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm I'm reminded of a person that, and it says, Lord, right now I'm not, I'm good, I'm okay, and I haven't, uh, kicked the dog and I haven't burned the cooking and, and I haven't really done anything shot at my kids but in a few moments I'll be getting out of my bed he said, and I'll need all the power that I need to live a life the depth of our prayer life reflects the depth of our relationship with God well if you want to, uh, to put that in a perspective the more you spend with your spouse your loved ones reflect the amount of time that you are in love with your Spouses, isn't it? Heaven is full of answered prayers for which no one has ever bothered to ask. That's from Billy Graham. He said, There are so many answers that God has for us. It was also written that there are many things you can do after you pray, but there is nothing you can do until you pray. How many of you know that? You know, sometimes when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we want to do, get up and go and do the things, and, and pretty soon everything seems to fall apart. You can't do anything until you pray. And we know that as Christians, we cannot do anything until after we pray. So what is the definition of prayer? What is means by when it comes to the prayer? Well, um, to put in perspective, prayer refers to the many multidimensional communication of believers with the Lord in which they develop an intimate fellowship with their Heavenly Father. Based on that, God is not a Heavenly Santa Claus. That's what it is. The danger that we have is this. We we begin, if we don't know about the communication of God, we tend to see our Father as the heavenly Santa Claus, that we approach him when we have needs. But that is not the case. The case is this, that it's, a, it's in, in other words, it is, a, it is communicating with our Father through Jesus Christ and therefore developing a relationship. It is not one-time deal, but instead it's a continuous relationship with our Father through Jesus Christ. Description of prayers in, in the Word of God. There are so many about descriptions of prayer. And we're just going to take some time, some of this. Description of prayer is this calling on God. That could be with your vocal, with your, with your, with your, with your voice, with, with the songs of praise, crying aloud to the Lord. On Fridays and times of worship, people are crying out, and that is prayer. Prayer is not just a mechanical way of communicating. It is out of the birthing of the heart. It is lifting up one's soul to the Lord. That is prayer, communing with him. Another one is this, is seeking the Lord. When we begin to seek the Lord through his word, 
meditation, we are praying, we are communicating and approaching the throne of God with grace and confidence. Praying is communicating with our Father through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is seeking, communicating, just like a father and a son communicating. Another one is this, drawing near to God, drawing near close to Him. And the last one that we can talk about prayer is this, calling on the name of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord. Now that is very important because calling on the name of the Lord will take us to the, to the, the next part, which means that the name of God are, is, 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 is not just one dimensional. Calling on the name of the Lord has so many aspects. And what they call them is the redemptive names of God. Redemptive name of God meaning he has shown his redemption or his help through people in the world in different situations. If you have a situation, God has an answer through his name, through who he is. Most of us are, uh, uh, we are people of, of, of experiences. We, we see things when we experience, when we see things happen. And somehow that's how God is dealing with us. For example, if there's a need in the war in the Old Testament, you would see that God would reveal himself in situations that was a problem, and then he will magnify his name through the situation. Look at this, for example. Yahweh is, is the name, the first name of uh, the, uh, what we call Yahweh, the Lord Jehovah, Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Adonai is another word, Genesis 15, 2, the Lord who is supreme. When God says that I am that I am, I am the Holy One, he's, he's, he's allowing us to let know that even though we are accepted in the beloved, that we can come to him, he's still God and we're not. He's still the creator. He's the creator. He's the ever-existent one. He's the one that is from the very beginning. He doesn't, he did, he doesn't have any beginning. He's the beginning. He's beyond. He's awesome. That's, that's the reason why when you begin to see where is God, you say, God, how awesome you are. Do you remember the time when you get saved and you say, God, how can you? How can you even love me? How can you even project your love in a world just like me? You begin to see that he is awesome. And yet, it did not limit him to show his love. Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, that's a full name for God, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the one who is mighty, the creator, the judge. Those are the names that evokes uh, power and fear, godly fear. Those are the names that he wants us to identify first that he is God. He's not just an idol, he's God. El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, the Lord God Almighty. People that have experienced God, he begins to tell them first, even Moses, take off your shoes because the ground that you are stepping on is holy. He wants us to have that perspective that he's not just anyone. He is God himself. He's righteous. He's holy. And then when we begin to understand that, then he begins to reveal himself in ways that you and I can understand. El Elyon, the most high God. El Elyon. That's the reason why when you come to church or in that place, you, you begin to say, God, forgive me. You are a mighty God. You are we are submitting ourselves because he deserves all the worship on our. Do you know that we don't, cannot add any glory, cannot add any worship to our God? It is just our response as gratefulness to him. When we, give, when we worship God, it is not for just for our benefit, although it, it, it's, it's somehow uh, there's that, that sense of lifting. No, he's already holy. He's got all glory. It is our purpose to worship him. Can someone say amen? And that is the reason why you can worship him with your hands down here. You can worship him with your hands lifted up. You can sing and dance. You can prostrate yourself. You can even uh, do, as long as you are worshiping God, there's no judgment. But as long as your heart is saying, God, I love you. I worship you. You are awesome. You are holy. When you come to a fellowship like this, we are not just participating to sing songs. We are here saying, God, 
I am here. I know that you are everywhere. But I am coming together. Believers, I want to be part of a group that is worshiping you, lifting you, that the nations will be open. Lord, hear our prayer. That's the reason why the church can never be boring because we have an awesome God. And sometimes as pastors or us, we make it boring. No, God is awesome. God is full of goodness. God, amen. Amen. And sometimes when it's, when, it's, when it's raining, when it's thundering, he has the drums of heaven giving the fear of God that we are not in control. And he says, God, I am God, you are not, so I am inviting you to my presence. Come. That is just, no, that is just knowing him. El Olam, the everlasting and changing God in a changing, shifting sand. Trends, styles. All the things that we, music changes. But God is unchanging. He is. He's the one that can solve, that can, that, that can meet our needs. What am I saying? Why, Pastor, I just want you to know, I'm just projecting to you, if you have lost the zest to worship God, Perhaps you need to break away somehow. Go, go to the mountains. Go to Retigion. Go somewhere. Say, God, I don't know anymore if you're alive. I guarantee you, if you begin to humble yourself, God, I don't have the zest. I don't have the, power, I don't have the energy to worship. Eventually, as you continue to worship God, he will, he will lift you from the inside out. He say, I am going to reveal myself because I am God. I love you. Has worked has jobs, has things, has distracted you from who God is. Most of the time when we begin to fade away from, from his presence, we also fade away with our love. God is saying, I am the unchanging God in all the things. And then number seven is very important, Jehovah. Jehovah, if you, if you have read your word, it is the existing one, the revealing one. That's when he begins. After we identify his holy, his Adonai, his El Shaddai, all this, and then he begins to identify Jehovah or Jehovah, the existing, the revealing one. He reveals himself as Jehovah Shabbat, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of powers. He's the Lord of the, of the Sabbath. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the commander in chief. He's the one that is working on your behalf. He's your God. He's my God. When there's a battle raging, call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Call upon the name of the Lord, and he will stand on your behalf. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, he provides. Jehovah Jireh is one of the most, um, most sought after name, revealed name of Jehovah, because it is our own Make up to receive, provide. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, the Lord will provide. It is Abraham's time when he was about to offer his son. And he says, the Lord will provide. Some of you, just like Billy Graham saying, there are so many answers in heaven, and yet you never partake of those needs. God is more than willing and sufficient to answer to, uh, to meet your need. Are you in need students? Are you in need of, of wisdom? Are you in need of financial help? Parents, are you, are you in need of things? These are the things that God is tangibly wants to reveal to each one of us that I can provide. I will provide. I want to provide. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. God who heals. We just had a miracle this week. One of our uh, family members who, who is incapacitated, and, and God continued to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to heal him continent away. His, God's hands are not short. Amen. He can heal. He can heal not only physically, he can heal our heart. No matter what you have gone through, no matter if you have been abused, misused, you have, uh, you, you have been denied, God can heal the brokenness. Come on now. God can heal the brokenness. God can heal your brokenness, but you've got to have all the broken parts before Him. See, sometimes that what we do, Lord, 
heal my brokenness, but we don't put all the broken parts together. We are actually putting them away, but God cannot put them together, although he can. We need to say, God, heal me from the inside. Here are the things. You and I cannot afford to be living a Christian victorious life, and we are still broken inside. God wants you to be whole. God wants you to be healed. God wants to heal your families. God wants to heal your relationship. God wants you to have well-being. That's why John chapter 10 verse 10b says, the, st- the, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Son of God has come to what? To give you life. What kind of life? Overflowing life. Amen? It is that overflowing. And sometimes our emptiness can never we have to minister from our overflow. I want to be, I want God to heal me. Jehovah Chitkinu, the Lord, our righteousness. When the enemy says, you are this, God says, he is my righteousness. When we received him, we become, he becomes our righteousness. No more condemnation. My, our mind may say that we haven't changed, but as far as God is concerned, we are righteous. The enemy will point you. Remember, remember the times that you did this? And God said, Jesus Christ says, I did it all. I did it all. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord, my shepherd, or the God who cares. How many of you have felt like that you are abandoned or, or, or alone in a very beautiful island? Jehovah cares for you. Jehovah cares for you. Jehovah can provide for you. Jehovah Rohi, he is the shepherd of my soul. There was this... Uh, elderly single pe- a mom uh, and she was just she's a Christian but she's so bothered she uh, she feels like there's no one there's no one who cares for her and she was um, she was in a rush after she went to the to the uh, to the uh, grocery gifts and stuff and she has an appointment to to get to and and in a rush she locked her keys inside her car in a, in a parking spot, in a parking lot, there was no one around. She forgot her keys and she locked herself out. She cried, God, Jehovah, Jehovah Rohi, my shepherd, the God who cares. And she looked around, would you send some help? Would you send some help? And no one was around and suddenly a big burly guy in a, in a, in a motorbike, boom! No, that that sound like a bike? <laughs> It's like sounds like a Yamaha, Yamaha. Huh? She was, he was, he was dirty. He had his helmet. I think it's like a heaven's angel. I think. And he got out. And says, "What do you need, Ma?" Ma'am says, "Well, like she panicked because of course she, she thought that this guy's going to rob him." And the guy said, and, and she said, "My my key is locked inside. I have to go to. I have an appointment to make." And a guy went back to his bike and took a, a hanger, clothes hanger, and he did some gibbering and pop it out. And the door was open, and the, la- and the old lady says, Oh, you're an angel. You're an angel sent from heaven. And the guy looked at her and said, Lady, I'm no angel. I just got back, I just came back from prison. He says, I'm a thief. I'm a bank robber. And, and the lady says, Oh, thank you, Lord. You send even a professional. <laughs> Amen. The mall of sorry, don't let your car get locked down, man. But he will provide for you if it has to do something. Come on now. You have been, you have, God has helped you in many ways. Angels and aware. Amen. Jehovah Shalom, the God who gives peace. How many of you need peace? An old man came back from church and, and went home and he says, picked up his wife. Oh. And the wife said, why are you picking me up? Oh, I want peace because the pastor says, lift up your burden. <laughs> <laughs> Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is near. That's why he's just, what? He's just, pray away. The Lord who sanctifies, the Lord who makes holy. And the last one is just Jehovah Nisi. The Lord, our banner, or our, the Lord, our victory. The Lord, my miracle. 
Some of you need to know these names. There are many names, but these are the, what are called Jehovah reveal himself. How many of you experienced some of this? You have, come on now, I'm going to say this again. How many of you re- receive, amen? Amen. These are the names. And that is the reason why when you pray, you begin to say, Lord, these are the things that, that, I'm, uh, that I need. That there's power in prayer. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Prayer is neutral, but it is the God everlasting that we pray to. Amen? Can someone say amen? It is the God that we, that we have a relationship. That is the reason why you and I have to settle the first part. He is Elohim, Adonai. He's our God. And then go to the Jehovah that he reveals so that there is this clarity of mind that he's not just there when we need I know a family, when they have troubles, they would pray to God. And when God answers their prayers, they just book away and, 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 and never sin again. That is not how we treat God. He is still Elohim. He is still Adonai. He is still holy. Because as God can take away as much as he can give as quickly as he can. Because he is still God himself. Would you please bow your heads for a moment?